Hello there, I'm Tom from Smart Aerials, and in this video we're going to be discussing whether um, you can use RG59 uh, coaxial cable for TV aerial satellite systems, uh, whether it's a good choice, and if you're going to be doing it, uh, how to terminate it. So, um, to begin with, most additional aerial systems, aerial satellite systems, uh, would use RG6. Uh, in, in the UK, we have a very uh, negative connotations, is that the right word, around RG6 because over here we have a cable manufacturers which brand one of their cables RG6 and it's a cheap nasty cable. Uh, it doesn't matter that the original RG6 standard calls for a centre copper conductor, not a lot of people are aware of that in the UK here. So, um, in other words, you know, WF100, CT100, all that sort of stuff. So, really, that's, that's the cable you want to be using. Um, for TV or satellite systems and video systems, but um, what's common in the CCTV world, they don't use this cable typically, although you can, they use RG59 cable, and I've got a piece here. Now, it's not ideal for TV systems, it's, it's a 75 ohm cable, so you can use it, there's no reason why you can't use it, but um, it's not it's not. It's more built for CCTV. Um, the cable losses aren't so. You know, it's more cable losses and stuff like that because it's a thinner cable, uh, and you're going to have a problem getting the connectors on it because obviously these. This is kind of designed for a BNC connector, um, but I'm going to show you a couple of methods how to get make connections for this in the aerial satellite world without having to use BNC connectors and stuff like that. So um, right off the bat, one of these techniques is a bit of a bodge. Uh, I don't mind saying that as a professional, it's a bodge uh, and it's not something I recommend but it's something that I've done personally myself on jobs because I've been in situations where I haven't been responsible for installing the cables I've only been responsible for installing like, the, the aerials and satellite dishes and the di distribution equipment and I've had to make a bodge otherwise I've had to completely rewire this, the whole house um, which obviously is going to be more money uh, but also if the cable is buried in the walls we're going to have to find new cable routes so we might be cutting holes in walls and uh, or running cables outside and drilling holes through walls and stuff like that. Uh, when in actual eventuality, if if you make this bodge a good bodge, if you make it so it's, it's a good connection, then it'll be fine, uh, providing you're fitting the right equipment to sort of carry the signals about and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to show you now. We've got a screw and F plug, and oh, it's, it's going on, it's going on a lot. Let's just cut. We're going to prepare a cable like we would we'll do like a normal F cable, yeah. So we're going to cut the outside PVC. Like so, and you can already see that this this tip of cable isn't a pretty good one. It's it's no there's no you know screen on it. It's just a single screen cable. I mean it's quite a dense heavy screen, so it's not it's not like the worst cable in the world. But we can see it's not really a good not the an ideal cable. Uh, but that's not to say that all RG6 cables don't have a screen. A lot of them do. But this particular one I've got, and it's actually a lot more common to find unscreened RG6 or single screened RG6 cables, should I say, without the protective screen. And, and what that does, that sort of protects against outside interference and keeps um, it minimises signal loss and stuff like that. So, uh, but this one doesn't have it. And I'm going to cut back the the dielectric, which in this case is the PVC around there by standing blade. So I've just made like an incision around the outside. I'm just going to pull that back and we kind of reveal it in so it looks a bit more familiar with um, you know, when we're, when we're pairing coaxial cables. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you now. If I try and, I've oh, just got a little short there, would you believe it? Right, let's get that off. If I try and screw that on, it's gone on, yeah, but it's come off, so it hasn't made a good connection, so the bodge we've made hasn't been good enough and we're going to have to do something just to make a better connection, so what I recommend doing again, I can't stress this enough, it's a bodge if I get someone in the comments telling me you've bodged that, I know I'm aware of it and I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but you know sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures, and I've got a bit of insulating tape and just round the, round the, the PVC I'm just going to do a wrap or two and Go to that, pull that back, and now we're going to go back on top with the braid. So we, we, what we've done, we've just built the cable, make it a little bit bigger, and we're going to screw on top of that. Um, and you can already see, I'm struggling to get it on, it's a much better connection already. Um, and you don't need a lot of tape, just a, just a reel or two. 
to get in there. And we're almost there. Now, it's not the tidy looking thing, so now we cut back that braid. And we cut back that. And we have something that resembles an F connector. And if I try and pull that, if I pull it hard enough, it'll come off like you know, most school F plugs will. But that, that's going to make a more reliable connection. So, especially when you're making connections up into something, you've got to shut it away or, or something like that. So, when you shut it away, you can't quite see what's happening to it. There's a good chance that's going to stay in place. Whereas, without putting that bit of tape on, it, it's, it's not going to stay in place. It, it's going to fail, it's going to fall out, um, and you're going to have all sorts of problems. Um, or alternatively, one other method here would be um, using a saddle and clamp type like wall plate or something similar. So um, if you wanted to put a coax plug on that end, what I'd recommend doing on an RG69K would be put the F plug on and then buy a female F to male coax adapter and then just screw it on and then you've got a coax plug. Uh, rather than trying to get the coax plug to fit this, because it, again, it's, it's not it's not going to fit very well. Um, that's going to make a better connection like that. And so we're just preparing the cable exactly the same way. And we've got like that. And what I've got as an example here, I've got a little a wall plate. So this is a screened wall plate. Um, and if we open this up, we've got. I'll wrap that around there. We've got somewhere that we can push that up into there. I've, I've already loosened these screws off, by the way. And then we can tighten the screws, shut that, tighten that up. When it's all nice and tight, it's not going to go anywhere. So it's going to make you know an okay connection. Not it's not bad. Um, certainly, again, I, I wouldn't wouldn't want to do this. But I, like I said, I've had to do this myself in several situations where the electricians have just installed the wrong cables um, and. It's just been the simplest way of getting it working. So I hope I hope you like this video. It's not. I understand it's not like the rest of the series where we're telling how to do stuff properly. But uh, I, I certainly know that there's going to be a lot of installers out there, or people just have the wrong cable and they just want to use what they've got. It can be done, uh, and that's how you do it. So I'm Tom Smart for Smart Hills. Bye for now. Oh, by the way, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. I didn't say that. Please do, please do subscribe that now before you go. Um, give it a thumbs up and bye.